God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I must first of all apologize for us coming on late. There was a technical issue, but we thank God that we are now on the air. And God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because of the time that has passed, I think we'll go straight into what we have for today. Um, just a few minutes of praise and worship, and then we're going for today's program. Yes. Chineke na dewo ndewo onye ne me ma dewo imela chineke na dewo dewo onye ke ro wa dewo imela aka na wo ya na reke ne na ro ti to onye na biozo na reke ne imela chineke na dewo dewo onye ne me ma dewo imela chineke na dewo dewo onye na biozo dewo In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. our tomorrow will always be better Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. As far as we retain our hope in God, as far as we retain our faith in God, God will never, God will never disappoint us because our future is greater in Jesus' name. Amen. And Jeremiah 29, 11 is somebody's portion. The Bible says that the thoughts that God thinks towards us are of good and not of evil to give us an expected end. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that your expected end, you must fulfill, you must reach that destination in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Just to remind us briefly, 31st is our praise night, 10 p.m. to 12 midnight. And January 2015 crusade, the first London crusade, is taking place 23rd and 24th January 2015. And the theme is destroying evil family patterns. And, of course, the address is Gateway House. You see the address being scrolled on the screen. And God will bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Just before we go into what we have today, I just want my sister to just say hello to those of you outside before we start off for today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, good afternoon, viewers. You're welcome once again to Jesus Sanctuary Ministries program. We thank God for your lives. We thank God for today. And the word of God said that he will perfect all that concerns you. So whatever it is God has started in your life, he will surely bring to perfection mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you will live to see his promises come into manifestation in your lives. Please stay tuned and God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the show in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, and God will surely bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Just like I said earlier that we just had some issues, technical issues, and we thank God everything is resolved and we are going straight into the message. Today we are going to talk about covenants and um, this is the month where 
a lot of things happen. In fact, not just December. Usually, once you enter into the, the last quarter of the year, you know, there's always issues of death, untimely death, sickness, accident. Because for those of us who may not know, this is the quarter where people who have, who have you know, entered one covenant or the other decides to renew their covenant. And of course, covenants are renewed by, you know, blood and one thing or the other. That is why in October, that's when you have the Halloween, and you have all sorts of demonic ceremonies going on. Mm -hmm. And on the surface, you may just think that there are physical ceremonies. But no, this is the time where renewal takes place. But I want us to get some little understanding about covenants so that we know why we pray these prayers to break every word, evil covenant, mm -hmm. to invoke the covenant of what? Mm -hmm. Exemption of which God has given unto his children to exempt us from whatever it is that the enemy what? Plus and plans. One of the things that we know about what you may not know about covenant, a covenant, of course, is an agreement. It's an agreement between what? Two people. It could be a physical, like a um, covenant of marriage, where it comes between a husband and what? A wife. It could be a covenant between two friends, just an agreement, maybe based on business, maybe the business um, relationship or one thing or the other. Covenants can be good, covenants can be what? Bad. But we're talking about those covenants which are very, very what? Evil. Covenants too can be between a person and a higher power, a higher authority, which is what? Spiritual. If even when covenants are physical, like the marriage covenant, it still has the, the input of what? Of the spiritual authority. Who is God? Why? Because God is the one that initiated marriage in the first place. So of course, for a marriage to really be what? A marriage is supposed to be God must be what in that marriage? God must be part of that word, covenant, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. But now we're talking about, so having that understanding, let's go to what? Satanic covenants, or rather, let me just ma make mention of the fact that covenants too are energized by blood, whether it's good or what, bad. In the Old Testament, every, the covenant that God entered into with the train of Israel was predicated on what? Blood, even with who? With Abraham was predicated on blood. And now, even in the New Testament, our covenant with God is predicated on what? Blood, the same way. The blood of who? Jesus Christ. So, in the kingdom of darkness, too, the covenants that people enter into with the powers of darkness is energized by blood. And that's why sacrifices are always what? Made. Sometimes they use the blood of animals, and unfortunately, they equally too use the blood of what? Human beings. And when somebody wants to renew a covenant that they've entered into with satanic powers is usually by this time of the year, October, November, December. That's just, yeah, those are the times, because these are the what, the darkest months when they begin to what, renew their covenant for a new year. And people who are into what, you know, some people have entered into covenant with the devil to make money, to get position, to get power, you know, or one thing or the other. And this is the time they begin to look for what? People that they will use as what? As sacrifice. They may not necessarily pick up somebody from the streets. Sometimes they do that back home. But they can even use what? Spiritual means to take the lives of what? People. And that's why somebody can go out and have an accident. It is a covenant that has been what? Manipulated. Or rather, a renewal of covenant that has been manipulated in the realm of the spirit in order to renew that covenant. So they just look for somebody who is you know, who they can get, and that is it. And that's why in some families you see what? A cycle of death. There's a covenant somebody is using that family to do what? To renew. You see a cycle of death. Every particular year, there must be what? Death in that family. Every particular year, there must be what? Accident in that family. Every particular year, somebody must fall seriously sick, and the person will do what? Will die. There's some people too, every year, maybe they've been doing well from January, by the time they get to this month, the, their business world collapses on one thing or the other. Why? Because somebody has entered into a covenant on their, you know, to maybe use their star. And they're energizing that covenant, maybe not by their own blood, but by what? Maybe the blood of animals or whatever. And then the person enters a new year and starts struggling what? Again. So all these things are signs that there's an evil covenant working in the life of what? Of that person in that family. So today, our prayer is going to be what? Centered on what? On that, but let's just go to the scripture so that we can, you know, understand clearly what we are talking about. My sister, please, can you go to Genesis chapter 17 and start from verse 2? Okay, Genesis 17 from 2. Yes, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. Then you can go straight to verse 9. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant there, therefore, 
thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Mm. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house, or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. Okay, that's okay, my son. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And you find out here that God entered into a covenant with who? With Abraham. From Genesis chapter 12, because of time, of course, we won't read it, but that was when God, first of all, called Abraham. And God told him, leave your kindred, leave, leave your people, and go to a place which I will show you. And he said that in blessing, I will, you know, he said that I will bless those that bless thee, and I will cause those that cause thee. There, God was what? Giving him what? A promise. It was a promise he made to Abraham. But by Genesis 17, it became what? God now decided to enter what? Into a covenant. And when a covenant is entered into, it is what? Binding. That covenant is what? Becomes binding. And God is a respecter of what? Of covenant. So even when somebody has a covenant in the kingdom of darkness, or maybe the person's parents or grandparents entered into a covenant, that covenant is still operative until there's a conscious what? You know, a conscious um, uh, uh, decision for that covenant to be what? Broken. You must consciously break that conscience, uh, that, that's what, covenant, even when you become what, a child of God. Why I'm saying this thing, because I, 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 because I preached about this on Wednesday, and in the church, and the Spirit of God was reminding me that morning when I was studying this, there was some time ago, a long time ago, then I was not even born again, but somebody was telling me this story, the person was born again, and talking about there's something that I, is in somebody, in some people's family, where that family is chosen, to be what the custodian of the what of the shrine in that particular village, or to be the priest the priest of that shrine, and you find out that just so it is in the in the kingdom of God, so it is in the kingdom of darkness. There are families you go to, the families you go to, you find out that priesthood is is no is um in that family, and that's why you have people who are what pastors in that family, you have people who are priests in that family. So it's like as if to say that just as God chooses certain people, Satan too chooses what people as well even though the funny thing i've noticed that the same people that satan chooses is actually the people that god chooses that's why when people are separated from that word satanic covenant they always go ahead to become what pastors because satan wants to make sure that such and such a person or people or family will never you know fulfill that which god has called them to do so he is the same people that god chooses the same people who that satan chooses and that's why you see in some families when they now become born again, people from that family become what? Priests. And even families where there's, you know, that, you know, they've started off as what? Pastors and so what? Satan too, tries to drag them back into what? The kingdom of darkness to become what? Priests in, unto who? Unto him. And one way he does that is not by making them, you know, follow one God or the other in, in quotes. I mean, a lot of people who have been brought up as Christians will never go and begin to worship a carved God. He makes them to join societies. That's why you can see somebody whose father or grandfather or great-grandfather was maybe in the priesthood, in the Christian church. The children or the grandchildren begin to enter into what? One occult or what? Or the other. So there's always what? That fights. And that's what the Spirit of God was telling me. And that's why you see that there's always that continuous what? You know, struggle in some, you know, families where the family wants to follow the way of God and Satan, maybe there's a covenant somewhere or maybe there's a covenant that was broken and they want to go back and they want to go to God and Satan tries to, what, drag them back. But what the Spirit of God was telling me that those covenants have to be, what, broken. You have to break those covenants and pray that your generation will never, what, go back. You find out that the children of Israel, no matter how many times God, you know, dealt with them, They'll say, no, we're going to worship only God. But what will happen? They will still do what? Go back and begin to worship what? The gods of the people what? Around them. There's always that, you know, pull for them to do what? Go back to worship what? The gods of what? Of other what? Nations. So there's always that fight. So the Spirit of God said that covenant is something we must what? Break. And once those covenants are there too, even when somebody wants to follow God, you find out that Satan keeps on what? Trying to what? Drag them back. 
covenants are something that a lot of the time, a lot of people really, really, really have to struggle at, you know, against. Some don't even know. You know, the Bible says, I think in 2 Corinthians 5, um, 17, once you're in Christ, you're a new creature, and old things are what? Passed away. But that doesn't mean that because it is like that, that you don't need to do something. Yes, all things are passed away. So that's why we have that confidence to be able to come out and say, Satan, I have no words. Part with you. But it doesn't mean that because Satan knows that God has said that, that he will just let you go easily. No, he won't let you go easily. He will still what? Try to what? Fight, knowing that he doesn't have the right, but believing that maybe you may be what? Ignorant. They are like, just like in the world today, some people take our people's rights away. Why? Because of what? Ignorance. So Satan still tries to fight to make sure that you and I don't come into our world, our rights. Even though we are new creatures, he's still fighting. Why? Because he wants to work on people's ignorance or work on the fact that, well, let him just try. Let him still fight. So that's why we have to do what? Fight. Life is what? A battle. You need to fight for your what? Right. It is our right, but we need to do what? Fight for it. So even though God has given us a new covenant, there are covenants that our forefathers entered into that if you don't break them, it becomes what? A problem. So what I was just saying about somebody who told me something a long time ago, the person was telling me that there was a, a, a family, the man, the father of the house was what? Was a priest of their shrine. And when he died, nobody took over. One of the sons had even become born again. That is why was going to church and for a year that shrine was without a priest and the shrine the god of that shrine began to say i need somebody to serve me and the others now went to begin to find out who is the one that's supposed to serve this god and it the lot fell on that family and fell on this young man and the young man said well i'm born again so i cannot and he said that you must what serve that um shrine because the priesthood is what in your family and he ignored them one day, from nowhere, the guy just ran mad and began to walk the streets of Abaddon naked. It happened a long time ago, and what I believe, because then there's a lot of, there was not a lot of knowledge concerning what? Deliverance. So a lot of the times, I'm sure maybe then, they didn't know what, they didn't think it was what necessary to maybe go back and break and pray and break and separate himself from that covenant. He just felt, well, I'm born again. All things have passed away. So, but God respects covenant, and that covenant was there even before He entered His covenant with God. Therefore, you must consciously make make a conscious effort and you know separate yourself by praying and say, "I have nothing to do what with this word covenant." I don't know what happened after then anyway because I mean it's not a story I followed, but that's what happened, and they had to begin to pray for that young man. I don't know what happened after that. So sometimes, those are the things that happen. Once there's a covenant and it's unbroken, even though you're a child of God, it will keep on what? Affecting. Whether it's a, an occultic covenant, whatever it is. So that is one of the things that I want us to know. And that's why we're going to pray against what? Covenants. Equally to, like I said earlier, there are people who have covenants, like covenants of death, occultic covenants, and they begin to look for people at the end of the year to do what? Renew what? their covenant with. But that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. So we're going to face the two areas. The areas where covenants are affecting us, satanic covenants are affecting us and drawing us back. Because unless those covenants are broken, you cannot fulfill what? Your destiny. No matter the good things that God is what? Showing you, showing us. Those covenants keep on what? Speaking. And you need to do what? Pray. And do what? Separate yourself from what? Those covenants. Some of the covenants are what? Based on your, on your village. There's some Villages, you don't know what the founder did. Sometimes the founder may have dedicated the whole people that will ever come out from that village into the hands of satanic powers. And therefore, you need to do what? Separate what? Yourself from those covenants. I come from a place where they do not kill Python. Mm -hmm. So it's like every person born in, in my place is somehow or the other associated with that unconsciously or unconsciously. So when you become born again, you have to consciously pray and separate yourself from that word, from that word, Python word, God, God, because it's, it's a, it's, there's a, you know, a river in my place, it's the Idemili River, and that Idemili River is what? It's a deity. And every person, every, if I even villages that are around about that place, in that local government, they don't kill Python. So as a born again child of God, you need to do what? Separate yourself. You need to pray and separate yourself from every word, covenant with what? Python spirit or with what? That it then really what? Goddess or, you know, or river. So that it does not what? Affect you as what? A child of God. 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to go into prayer. We'll just pray some prayer points and then we'll open the lines. I'm just like hurrying up because we did not start in time. But I wanted us to have some background um, information. Praise the Lord. I, I think we'll still um, read one scripture again before we, uh, or two scriptures again, so that when we are praying, you will have understanding. Second Corinthians, my sister, Second Corinthians 6 from verse 14 to 18. We'll read that and then we'll read another scripture in Hebrews and then we will go straight into prayer. Second Corinthians 6 from 14. Yes, my sister. Be, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Yes. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Just stop there. You will still continue. Mm. If, you, if you look at what, what I, what I, why I told her to stop was I want us to know that who was Paul speaking to in the Bible? He was speaking to Christians mm. because the Bible is for us. So he is, he is telling them, he is talking to the children of God and telling them, do not have words, any words. Say, be not unequally words, yoked, yoked together with what? Unbelievers. Yes. For what fellowship have righteousness is what? Unrighteousness. So he's not talking to people who are not what? Born again. Mm. So there's always that possibility. It may not be between you and another person. But it could be between you as per your what? Family. Your family background. Those covenants were entered into by what? Forefathers, foremothers, even parents. Even fathers and mothers. So, okay, I might say, let's continue so that okay. I'll be, I will be speaking as you okay. read. Yeah. And what communion had light with darkness? Yes. And what concord had Christ with Belial? Mm -hmm. Or what part had he that believeth with an infidel? Mm -hmm. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? Mm -hmm. For ye are the temple of the living God. Mm -hmm. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among so them. So that is what I want to say. That wherefore, come out what? From, from among, among them. them. That's, what, that's what, you know, the word of God is telling us. Come out what? From among them. It doesn't mean that you consciously had anything to do with the covenant, but you must what? Come out what? From among them. How do you come out from among them? By what? Pray and breaking that word. Covenant in your foundation, in your family, in your generation, in your ancestral line, in your what? Village. You come out from, you separate yourself from it by consciously praying and separating yourself from any agreement, known or unknown, with idols, with the powers of darkness that have entered into knowingly or what? Unknowingly. There are some people who are what? Who are dedicated in the womb. They don't even know. They were de dedicated when they were what? Children. I was telling the story about a young girl. I think she was 18 then. She became born again and she was telling her story. How she was dedicated in the womb by her mother. She was still in her mother's womb when she was dedicated to the powers in the water. And by the time she was four years, she was even higher in authority than her mother in the world, in the kingdom of darkness in the water. So there's some people who are dedicated like that. And for her, she was operating in that dedication. Some, they don't know. The only thing that they know is that maybe when they sleep, they see what strange what manifestations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some people say that they see themselves flying in, in the night. They don't know. Some say that they see themselves with a group of people. Either they're eating or they're celebrating, but she doesn't know the people who are there. So there are people who, are, who have one covenant or the other. They are unaware of. But those things will always have a way to affect. That's why the Bible says, wherefore, come out from among them. We come out from among them by what? By prayer and separating ourselves with prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, my sister. And be ye separate, says and be the Lord. And be ye separate, says the Lord, yes. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. Amen. Yes. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Praise the Lord. Said, and I will be what? A father. And you shall be my what? Sons and my what? And daughters. Like I said, God is saying this thing to those who are already children of God. Mm. So why would he now say, and then I will be a father? That means the that there will be now a what? A manifestation of the blessings of God being a father. What? Unto what? Us. That is, that is it, because he's still talking to those who are born again. He's not talking to those who are not born again. And if we are born again, we are already what? Children of God. So for God to say, then I will be a father, that means I will now be able to do what? Show forth my blessings. There will be no covenant hindering the manifestation of those blessings in your life. And truly, you'll be able to walk as a daughter, and as a son, and as a daughter of the most what? High God. Praise the Lord. Uh, my sister, please, can you just go to um, Hebrews 12? 
Hebrews 12, 24. Hebrews 12, 24. Mm. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I just wanted us to see this so that we will know that covenants are what? Are predicated on what? On blood, both in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. We will not read this, but in Exodus 24, verse 6 to 8, after um, Moses finished reading out to the people the words of the word, the covenant of God, that is in the, the Ten Commandments, when he, after reading it out, the next thing he did was to do what? To take the blood that was sacrificed. Mm. They sacrificed the blood of, of, of animals. They, and he took the blood and sprinkled it what? On the people. After reading what? The words of the word. Covenant. Then he now sprinkled it on the people. It's the same thing in the kingdom of darkness. They come into what? That agreement. And after making that agreement, they now seal that agreement with what? With blood. The first one that we read in Genesis chapter 17 from verse 2 to about, I think, 12, you find out that apart from the blood of sprinkling, there's always what? A token of what? Covenant. Something that shows that there's what? There's a covenant. Like in marriage now, that marriage is the easiest one. I can give an example. When two people get married, the token of the covenant is what? Is the ring and the what? Certificate. Mm. So that, that, that proves that there's what? There's what? Marriage. Because you can say, okay, I got married. What is your proof? Your proof is what? The token of the covenant. Even when we were praying on Wednesday, the Spirit of God led me to say something. Back, I, well, I'm sure they have it here, but I don't know what they call it. But what we call it is Obanje. We see people who have Obanje spirit. And then when we were small, when the native doctors used to do what they used to mm -hmm. do with them, they would always ask them, where is their what? Their token, their token of covenant. It could be a ring, mm -hmm. it could be an earring, it could be something. And they will show them where they maybe buried it under a tree or buried it under what? under a stone or something. So that is what, a token. And until that thing is what, destroyed, that covenant keeps what going on. But that was for the native doctors anyway. As children of God too, our own is to what? Pray. And of course, ask God whether that, that token is let the fire of God, what? Destroy it mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. So we're going to go, just pray some few prayer points and by God's grace, open the line. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So my sister, please, you're going to pray using that word of God in 2 Corinthians 6 from verse 14 and pray for those who are watching any satanic covenant, any evil covenant, ancestral covenant, generational covenant, any covenant involving, you know, satanic dedication mm. to gods and goddesses <coughs> of the land affecting the people of God. You're going to pray that the blood of Jesus Christ will nullify that covenant, mm. that the fire of God will destroy that covenant and any tokens of those covenants in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, my sister. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father and our God, eternal King of glory, King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we lift up before your throne of grace and mercy our viewers who are watching this program right now. And we pray, standing on that word of God of 2 Corinthians 6, 14. And we pray this day that every satanic covenant, every demonic, every occultic, every witchcraft, every marine covenant operating in your lives, every covenant that you have been dedicated to, knowingly or unknowingly or that has been operating in your line in your lineage in your generation or in your families or in your hometown covenants that have been dedicated that have dedicated you to the god or goddess of your land or of your community or your hometown father in the name of jesus we pray this day let the blood of jesus christ separate you from such evil covenants in the name of jesus Amen. we pray let the blood of jesus christ Cancel and nullify every demonic, every occultic, every witchcraft, every marine covenant that is operating in your lives, operating in your, in your lineage, operating in your foundations that has been hindering the ordination of God in your lives. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cancel and nullify those covenants in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let the fire of God destroy those covenants and let the covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ be established in your lives, in your foundations from now and forever. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And we are still going to pray. Um, Hosea 13, 14. God said that he will be a plague unto death for us. Because he has delivered us what? From the power of what? Of the grave. Um, Isaiah 28, verse 15 says, talks about those who have what? A covenant with death. So we're going to use the two words and we're going to pray. Those who have a covenant with death. Those who have a covenant with the grave. And that they want to use any of you as 
you know, to use any of you as exchange for their lives. Mm -hmm. This December, this um, period of time, or your family members, you're going to pray. Let they and their family become that ransom. Amen. Anyone that wants to use your life, the life of your husband, the life of your wife, the life of your children, as exchange in order to renew their covenant with death or to renew their covenant with the grave, their occultic covenant, you're going to pray that it is they that will use their own, their own words, their own lives and the lives of their own family members as a ransom for that covenant. Your yeah, sister, please pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father and our God, we once again thank you for the privilege of being in your presence and praying, lifting up your children before your throne of grace and mercy. Father, we pray this day that as many who are watching this program and there's anyone out there who has covenant with death according to Isaiah 28, 15 or Hosea 13, 14 and the agents of darkness want to use you in, as exchange or use your husband or your wife or your children or your beloved ones as exchange especially at this period of time father in the mighty name of jesus let those who want to exchange your lives or to extend their own lives with your lives let them become a ransom for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let them and their own family members die for your sake in the name of Jesus. Because the word of God says that the wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the ungodly for the upright. Therefore, whosoever wants to exchange your life with their own lives, or whosoever wants to extend their own lives to, with your life or the lives of your loved ones, let them and their family members become a ransom for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Just two more and then we'll open the lines. We're going to use the word of God in Ecclesiastes um, chapter 3 and um, verse 2. Any timetable, any, any timetable, any clock of the enemy, every evil timetable, evil calendar, evil clock that has been set up to project a cycle of infirmity, to project a cycle of failure, to project a cycle of frustration, a cycle of stagnancy, a cycle of accident in your family. That's why some people, by the time they get to the end of this year, either there's a death in the family or there's a sickness that comes and takes away all the money they had made that year or all of a sudden a business that was doing well, it now crashes because somebody has projected that cycle. So instead of that person to prosper, they will prosper on that person's behalf. But today, it must be broken in Jesus' name. Amen. So my sister, you're going to pray every evil cycle of death, of accident, of failure, of frustration, or whatever it is that the enemy has used evil timetable or evil clock or evil calendar to project in the lives of the people, let it be destroyed. Let those timetables and clocks be nullified. Amen. Yes, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, <clears throat> eternal King of glory, King of kings and Lord of lords, Father, we once again lift up your children watching this program right now as we pray standing on the word of God of Ecclesiastes 3, 2. Father, in the name of Jesus, every satanic timetable, every satanic, every occultic, every witchcraft, every marine timetable or clock or calendar of death or accidents or sickness, disease and infirmities or shame of disgrace, of scandal, of humiliation, of poverty, of failure operating in the lives of your people that the enemy has set up in order to continually project cycles of death of accidents, of sickness, of disease, of infirmity, of shame, of disgrace, of scandal, of stagnancy, of frustration into the lives of your children. Father, let those satanic timetables, calendars, and clocks of death, let them be destroyed right now by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the consuming fire of God locate those satanic timetables, locate those satanic clocks, locate those satanic uh, calendars, destroy them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, let those involved, let it be a set time a set term of calendar, a set term of clock, a set term of, um, of, um, of timetable for their own judgment, for their own death on behalf of your children. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. let their evil be reversed upon their own heads. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Amen. And finally, my sister, you're going to pray using the word of God in First Samuel 18, 3 to 4. Of course, we will read it. That was when Jonathan and David entered into a covenant. And the token of that covenant was, you know, Jonathan's clothes. He took his clothes, his headgear, the, the, you know, the ones he wear, and gave it to David. They entered into a covenant there. So we're going to pray, and you're going to pray any token of any covenant that is affecting the lives of those who are watching. 
usually whether it's their umbilical cord, whether it's their hair, whether it's their pictures or their item of clothing, whatever has been used as a token of evil covenant to keep them in bondage. We're going to pray that wherever those tokens have been buried, under a tree, in an evil forest, in any hole in the ground, let the fire of God locate where it has been buried and let it be destroyed completely. Let us thus pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, eternal King of glory, King of kings and Lord of lords, Father, we once again lift up your, your children who are watching this program right now, and we pray this day concerning tokens. Father, every satanic token any, in the lives of your children watching, any kind of token that is operating in the lives of your children, be it on Blake card, be it photographs, be it uh, the items, of their clothing or their body parts that has been buried. Is it in the sea? Is it in the ocean? Is it uh, uh, beneath a rock? Is it uh, be, uh, buried under a tree and it has been hindering your children and it has been affecting your children from achieving that which I have ordained for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the Holy Ghost, Father of God, locate those tokens wherever they have, bur uh, they have been buried and destroy them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let those tokens be consumed by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, we pray this day that from now forever, let every token that is operating in the lives of your people hindering your children from progressing, from uh, from being what God said it would be, let those tokens be destroyed right now, wherever they are in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let the blood of Jesus Christ cancel and nullify every effect of those tokens in the lives of your children Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And those involved, let them have their evil in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Jesus. We give you all the honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Like I said, we had to rush and rush by list. We are able to have prayed at least four prayer points mm. in Jesus' name. We'll just allow the lines to be open because last, last week, Saturday, we didn't. Though the Spirit of God led me not to. So we just have decided to pray and pray throughout. And I know you are blessed in Jesus' name. Just as we wait for everything to be set, I just want to, something just occurred to me. Wednesday, the 17th, that is this coming Wednesday, is going to be our last um, miracle service for this year and it's going to be a great time it's going to there's a, a surprise waiting for everyone that will come so i'm just um employing you to make a date on that wednesday our miracle service is from 10 a.m to 12 um, noon and um you'll be blessed as you come on in jesus name is going to be our last one for this year because the next wednesday after that is 24th uh, the 24th of December, and I'm sure a lot of people will be running around for their Christmas shopping. But it's 24th anyway, so, but 17th is going to be the last day, so make sure, it just occurred to me, to make sure you come and you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Hello, Susie from London. Hello, hi. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, I can hear yeah. you. Yeah, uh, yeah, if you have um, a member of your family. Pardon? If you if you have a member of your family yes. where where it be witch yes and the, the people say then they see him for the dream mm -hmm. the witch yes uh -huh. they can't go tell them some of the children go tell them say then they see him for him they make, say they witch them mm -hmm. and then um, the their mama the mama where then they tell he can't say no he not be witch yes. And then he come begin the holler and say why they come the vest. Why then they talk say then they see him for say not be witch. Mm -hmm. And then the remaining of his children, they come begin vest say the other ones where they call their mama witch, say now then they lie. Mm -hmm. So now those children what did they go fit to now because the family don't divide into two now. How no. then they no, no, they want the one. Is there? Mama. Yeah, the, is, is, the mama know which is it. No, it's a very simple solution because anybody can say anything. That somebody says that somebody is a witch doesn't mean it's supposed to be true. But what I would I would advise you, I would advise you to advise them. The Bible says in Ephesians six twelve, we wrestle not against what flesh and what blood. We are not fighting that which is physical. We are fighting what is spiritual. So it's not about the person. What you need to do is to pray and bind that spirit of witchcraft. You bind the spirit of witchcraft. If it's affecting any of the children, you bind that spirit of witchcraft. That is what you pray. You bind the spirit of witchcraft. 
we're not fighting physical battle. We are fighting what? Spiritual battle. And when you bind that spirit of witchcraft, you set yourself free from every effect of that word, witchcraft spirit. It has nothing to do who, if it's a person or not, but that's not your business. Your business is to fight against what? The spiritual what? The, the spirit of witchcraft and bind that spirit. Praise the Lord. Hello, Cosmos from Italy. Hello, Cosmos from Italy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think we lost that caller. I'm sorry about that, Cosmos. So please, you can still try and um, call in. And we will be able to get through to you in Jesus' name. Like I said, when the, as I was trying to explain longer for the first caller, you know, sometimes we, somebody can accuse somebody of something and say this person did this or this person did that. Some of them are just what? Lies. Some of them are just, you know, somebody trying to be what? To be funny. Uh, so it's always better to not to allow yourself to be carried away by what somebody is saying. Uh, this one is accusing this person, accusing this person. What we need to pray, we pray against what? The spirit of what? Witchcraft. Our battle is what? It's spiritual. It's not what? It's not physical. So what you need to do is to do what? To bind that spirit of what? Of witchcraft. Or bind that spirit of occultism. Or bind whatever spirit. Because it's a spirit that we are fighting against. And we fight against those spirits through what? Through prayer. And it is for God to now deal with the situation the way he wants to deal with it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hello. Andrew from Croydon. God bless you. Uh, God bless you, my brother. Uh, so it's a wonderful uh, opportunity and the privilege that we mm. uh, have this uh, channel, Glory Channel, mm. and through that channel, yes, uh, we can hear God's word and message. Mm. It's really uplifting and inspiring. Amen. Amen. And uh, I believe a lot of lives have been changed and transformed through your ministry. Amen. Uh, it's my prayer that God will use you mightily, and uh, and many souls shall be saved Amen. through this ministry. Amen. May you be continue to do the good work that you know, God has started you know, in through your life and testimony. God mm. bless you. God bless you, and God thank you so you. much God bless you. for God your God. prayers in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. God bless you too in Jesus' name. Hello, Lanre from Germany. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. May the, may the good Lord bless you for Amen. the good work that you are doing. Amen. And may the good Lord bless your husband and your entire house in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, man, there is a dream I dreamed that bothered me most. Yes. And this dream is that uh, because I'm in a church. Yes. So in this in this dream, I saw my pastor. Yes. So my pastor was before a river inside the dream. Inside the church was trying to you know, to pluck some leaves on the river while the river was flowing very mm. clear. And outside, outside the, uh, the church, there were some men in the bondage. Mm. And the church was so dark that there were a lot of people, in, there were a few people inside. So as I saw the pastor, I was just talking to him, that why didn't you go to church? Mm. So it happened that in the other side, there were a church very full of light, and there were a lot of people. It seemed, it seemed mm. that there is a preacher who came from another place to come and preach in the church. And mm. that church was so full. But in the church I was going, there was nobody there. It was, it was dark, and there were a lot of people who were kept in bondage. I didn't really know what is going on. Ah, the, the, the dream is very clear now. It's very clear now. The dream is showing you that you're not supposed to be there. God has shown you two churches, one dark, one full of life. So you choose the one that is full of life. That is what, that is what the dream is telling you. God Thank bless you. Man. Yeah, that's what it's telling you. God bless you. Hello, Lorraine from Ilford. Hello, hi, hello. Hello, how are you? God bless you. I'm well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The reason why I'm calling today is that um, I'm finding in my family, yes. every time I get to a certain part, I keep um, being set back. I have dreams of something biting me, sex in my dreams, yes. all this manner of thing going on. And it's like I can't push forward. Mm. I'm just praying, God, deliver me, deliver me. Whatever it is, I can't seem to see what it is. Mm. Deliver me. Um, you know, enough is enough. Of it's course. been going on for so many years. I'm mm. desperate for God to deliver me. And he will deliver you in Jesus' name. I will pray Amen. for you. I will pray yes. for you, but I want you to send us an email so that we can send you some prayer points you, you'll be using. But I want you to use the word of God. We use it today in Second Corinthians 6, 
from verse 14 to 18. And I want you to pray. I will pray for you that any covenant, known or unknown, any covenant with the powers of darkness, known or unknown, entered into on your behalf by your parents, by your forefathers, affecting your life, by the power and the blood of Jesus, I command those covenants to be broken and to be destroyed over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Evil covenants are setting you back. Today, I use the blood of Jesus Christ to nullify them. You have a covenant with Jesus Christ. Let that covenant with Jesus Christ manifest and show forth in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hello, Lillian from London. Hello, Lillian from London. Hello, woman of God. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Ah, God bless you for the good work you're doing. I know you've forgotten me anyway. <laughs> Your former um, praise and worship leader, Lillian. Okay. You should come. And, you should come and see us one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> you should come and see us, not on phone. You should come and see us. Because you... <laughs> okay. I will. Oh. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you, my sister. It's nice hearing from you. Okay. But I want to see you. Thank you. I want to see you. I will, yeah? Yes. I will. Yes. All right. I will. I will. God bless you. And God bless you. you. I'm sorry, I have to cut off because we only have 50 okay. seconds to go. Let me just pray for this as we didn't open the lines early because we didn't start early. God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus. My prayer is that this period of time, you will rejoice in Jesus' name. Mm. You will never sorrow in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Whatever the enemy plans or plots against you and your family, they will never see the light of day. Mm. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jeremiah 29, 11 is your portion. The thoughts that God thinks towards you are of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Those thoughts of God shall show forth and manifest in your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, for those who have not accepted Jesus Christ, my prayer is that you will touch them in the name of Jesus. And they will make our Lord Jesus Christ their personal Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Sunday is tomorrow. Make sure that you do not stay at home. Sunday is the day of the Lord and make sure that you come and honor God in your church in Jesus name. If you are around the area in Jesus sanctuary, you're welcome to come. God bless you and God keep you in Jesus name. Amen.